Good evening. It's another edition of Nigeria Decides 2023. I am Suleiman Suleiman. Tonight, we will focus on yesterday's ruling in Abuja by the Court of Appeal, but more importantly, on the cancellation of the governorship and state house of assembly elections by the INEC earlier to the, uh, last night also. We will take reactions from Nigerians on that and especially what it means for the election to have been postponed to next year. However, also, viewers, you will have a chance to contribute to this uh, discussion when our phone lines open later in the program. I have with me uh, two gentlemen who are well versed on these issues, and we hope they will not only do justice to the topic, but also answer any questions you might have. Our guest in the studio, our first guest in the studio is a veteran journalist, veteran columnist, and now INEC National Commissioner in charge of Kaduna, Niger, and Plateau States, Malam Muhammad Haruna. We're happy to have you, CISA. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also with me is Barista Oluwale Uzi, Osaze Uzi, who is a former INEC Director, Voter Education and Publicity. We're also happy to have you here today. Pleasure to be so, here. So I think it's, it's fair to say we have the whole of INEC <laughs> right in our studio uh, uh, right now. Thank you. Uh, but before we go on to the topic, we'll take a short break during which we'll bring you reports on what has been going on with INEC and its postponement and how Nigerians across the country have reacted to the, I mean, the postponement of the elections by INEC. Stay tuned. As soon as the Court of Appeal gave its nod to INEC to reconfigure the bimodal voter accreditation system beavers on Wednesday evening, the Commission announced change of date for the governorship and state assembly election from March 11th to March 18th. The decision to postpone the election elicited diverse reactions from Abuja residents. It's a good move because the election is fraught with a lot of uh, controversies. So in order to resolve those controversies, it is best that uh, things are done normally for the benefit of doubt. Uh, because INEC wanted to reconfigure and the aggrieved parties actually did not want that move because they felt that or they feel that uh, the election uh, results in the INEC data will be tampered with. So I think for the benefit of doubt, INEC postponing it and giving every party a level ground to downs all doubts is is very much in place they took a rightful decision in order to you know uh, aminorate and uh, put in place on the issues of uh, presidential election on the beavers so they have to give the governorship election time in order not to model things together however some say the postponement shows that the independent national electoral commission is not ready in the first place. Now you are prepared to go and vote. Why would somebody now postpone it if the person does not have a negative intention? If you have a good intention for Nigerians, you should have allowed them to vote on that day. Why postponing it? There is no need of postponing it. So I see that they are trying to do one or two things, which I don't know what they are up to. But let's watch and see. What matters is let's do the right thing, let's vote. We shouldn't relax, we, sh we will still come out to vote as we did in the presidential election as well. I feel that the INEC are actually not yet ready for the people of Nigeria for the next election. That is the reason for the postponement. But it also has a side effect towards other people and majorly students that they had shut down their schooling for a very long time. This will affect so many people's plan. And just in general, what we just want as Nigerian is that the elections should go peacefully and then the beavers and every other thing that INEC has failed in the presidential, they should try and correct for the next election. I have already seen failure on it. Okay? For the government to postpone this uh, uh, governorship uh, election, I've seen a bias on it already. Many Nigerians said they will wait until the new date to do the needful so that credible leaders will emerge from a free, fair and credible elections. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. Following the postponement of the election to March the 18th, some politicians say it is the right move considering the alleged irregularities identified during the just-concluded presidential and national assembly election. 
there is no reason for INEC to be failing in terms of um, logistics um, operations. Mm -hmm. That's one. Secondly, there is also issue with the IRF. You know, I one of the reasons why I decided to contest for election is because of the confidence I have in the electoral process, you know. Uh, I was given so much assurance by INEC and also by the presidency that uh, the election would be free and fair and we would not have issues. But then, you know, one of the most important key component of the electoral process is that IREF. And we have seen how it has failed, you know, on the day that is supposed to be optimal. According to some voters in Kanu, the postponement of the gubernatorial election will only add more pressure on the electorate who would have wanted to finish voting once and for all. I think INEC should have allowed this election to just go ahead because we want to finish it once and for all. People are suffering. We just want to finish this election so that we know that we are over it. But while the Independent National Electoral Commission say the election is postponed to enable the commission reconfigure Viva machines, these members of the Transition Monitoring Group in Kano are out on the streets to demand for peaceful election come March the 18th. We have witnessed what happens during the presidential, presidential election. The killings, the destruction of poor parties are live. So we are anticipating the same thing to happen during the gubernatorial election. Politicians are making arrangements to destroy the, the, the setting and the situation in the election so that we organize this campaign rally to tell the world that we don't want violation of rules or regulation. At the moment, the Independent National Electoral Commission in Kano, like in many other parts of the country, have continued to assure voters that the election will be free, fair, credible and violence-free, and that voters should feel free to come out to exercise their civic responsibility on 18th March. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Kano. Welcome back. That was uh, the report uh, of what has been going on over the past 24 hours uh, in the country and uh, the chain of reaction that uh, things have uh, are taken. First, the court uh, decision to say that ANA can actually go ahead and reconfigure right. uh, its beavers uh, systems for the uh, governorship uh, elections. And then following that, ANA coming out to say that it will need more time to uh, postpone the election to uh, March 19th, uh, uh, that's by one week, and then uh, citizens reacting uh, uh, to that uh, postponement. One of the major things that came out is the crisis of confidence that you know most Nigerians uh, are, are feeling. As one uh, voter put it, is actually a, uh, a governorship candidate of the PRP in Kano State. You know, one of the speakers uh, on TV there. So that. He contested because he had confidence in INEC. That's in, in the electoral process. Now he doesn't feel like he has that that confidence again. So how has this got to a crisis of confidence for INEC in relation to Nigerians? Well, I, I don't know. I, hmm. I think on the whole, people, the those who are critics of hmm. INEC have not been fair to it. Okay. Of course, there, there were lapses. Hmm. Uh, over and above all, we didn't download real time on IREV as, as we had promised that we will. But people should look at the outcome of the election. As far as I'm concerned, since 1999, we haven't had an election where all sorts of expectations, you know, assumptions of people were overturned. This is an election in which, you know, uh, the winner of the presidential election lost Lagos. The president himself lost Kazina. Uh -huh. In Kaduna, the staunchest supporter of Tinubu uh -huh. is a Rufai, at least arguably. Uh -huh. You know, or at the, 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 he may have won the presidential, uh -huh. but all the legislators now, uh -huh. except two, are from the opposition party. All the three senators are now PDP. Uh -huh. And PDP and actually won in Kaduna. Precisely. So I, 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 I don't understand it when people say, were not uh, uh, that that it's 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 a rigged election. Mm. If we have any motive to rig the election, mm. some of these people would have rigged it for. Take for example the uh, chairman of the INEC Senate Committee, mm. you know, uh, Senator Kabiruga. Kabiruga. Mm. All the members of the of the of of INEC now the the members and the chairman 
mm. you know, he was the chair of that uh, committee, and yet he lost his seat. Mm. Hajja Duku, who is in the Federal House of uh, Reps, mm. she's like more or less the permanent chair of that, that committee. She lost her, her seat. She's the ch chair of uh, INEC at the House of Reps. At the House of Reps. She and lost, she lost her, her seat. And she lost her seat. So you can, so many governors, sitting governors, mm. who many people think had come to regard the Senate as their retirement benefit, mm. at least about seven or so of them, lost, in spite of the fact that they were sitting governors. Mm. So when people, condemn the election, I don't understand it. Mm, thank you. That, 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 that's quite interesting because um, what Mali Muhammad is saying here is you have result, you have process, you have result. We know that the process was not perfect, it had problems, but the result will tell you that it had done better than uh, uh, previously, that it has done quite well. Yes. But, but why are Nigerians feeling different? Why are people not even looking at the results actually? Um, I'm happy you separated process mm. from outcome. Yes. Um, if you look at the process, uh, I think the commission acknowledges that there were challenges with it. Mm. Perhaps, perhaps, part, an essential part of that process is the fact that people should see not opaqueness but transparency. Mm. And as far as they're concerned, the transparency was in the going to the portal and seeing their own personal results, seeing my polling unit, I voted, and this was the outcome in my polling unit. So they're very interested in seeing that. Mm -hmm. You know, not necessarily interested in what's happening uh, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a, I think it's a personal thing. And mm -hmm. because Inek promised so much, and somehow, as far as they are concerned, delivered too little in that regard, mm -hmm. There was something on towards, and because there's a lack of communication as to what the what the reason was until Sunday evening, the conspiracy theorists took over the stage, and social media was not awash and with all sorts of allegations, mm. and there was nothing to counter that, mm. nothing to rebut that. So the longer that was there, the the, the more people believed that yeah something on towards, and don't forget, mm. the outcome had not been um, officially evident. announced. I was, I was I, I, it wasn't I, I, evident until much later, but opinions had already been formed. But this is where some people, are, th th those who have uh, other opinions, are saying that it is precisely at the point where the opposition parties began to see that they were losing, that they now seized upon that narrative of non-transmission of, elect uh, uh, of non-electronic transmission of results, because Saturday morning, throughout, nobody was talking about, people were talking about beavers in relation to delays or not functioning to do accreditation. Yes. Nobody was talking about electronic transmission of yes. results or not. Sunday to none. But by Tuesday, when parties in their own situation rooms had a better view of where the results were heading, this was the time that some of the opposition parties, as demonstrated by Dino Malai of PDP, now seize the moment and say, okay, if you don't translate, uh, if you are not transferring uh, electronically, uh, uh, transmitting the results, therefore everything is wrong with the results. Some people are saying this is opposition opportunism rather than anything wrong, even with the process. No, possibly so, but I don't necessarily agree because okay. noise was already being made, especially mm. on social media, as at Saturday night by citizens, mm. by citizens. Mm. And I also would like to to to, to acknowledge that dichotomy between citizens mm. and political parties. Yes, citizens have a right because the promise was made to the citizens. Mm. I want to see my polling unit. The political parties had agents; they have a, they have a counterpart of these results. Mm. So I think actually before Tuesday they already knew. Mm. I don't know what happened in the. Uh, subsidiary mm. coalition centers, world level local government, because what most of us saw was the national coalition in Abuja, but coalition had already taken place in subsidiary levels. Mm. So you see that, so they will have known even by Sunday morning, I think uh, from their own situation rooms, a well organized party would exact, know almost to the, to the last number mm. the number the, that they have scores in, in the various places. Mm. But, uh, the, the, so, but yes, there's opportunism in that. It, mm. Citizens were complaining because citizens were not aware. Mm. But the parties and candidates were aware. Mm. They had a fair idea the outcome of that election because they had gathered. What does INEC do with coalition? They just add to these things. The, the figures. Is that, mm. Yes, just yeah. add the figures. Mm. And you can easily do that. If you have all the results, mm. you can also do that. Mm. But part of the, 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 the galism came later when uh, people said, look, Okay, now you have this uh, results. What do you do with it? We cannot ascertain this thing. The regulations made by INEC says you compare, before you start the collision, mm. you compare two things. One, the first thing, 
your beavers machines, what number is accredited in beavers as shown by the beavers? Does it tally with the paper, the result sheet? Because you are supposed to take the number from the beavers machine and endorse it on the result sheet. So does it tally? That's number one. Number two, before you start collecting, look at the scores from the transmitted or transferred. Those two words are used interchangeably in the Electoral Act and in the guidelines. It can be trans transmitted, transferred. Before, look at the beavers machine or the, or the, or the uploaded one. Do the, the figures and scores match what is on the paper one? The rules say do that before you start uh, compiling. That's where the political parties have jumped and said, no, you didn't do that, and maybe you should have done that. But so those are the, the outcome as uh, Madam Harry, there's so many examples. Yobe, the previous chairman of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of APC, of the APC. lost uh, Yobe, so rather surprisingly, which is, has been the bastion mm -hmm. of the APC, but they lost that to, to the PDP. The challenge now was... Even the current chairman lost his own the current chairman bid lost, lost his, uh, to an SDP, a party lost, that lost no one knows. Uh, lost the state. And, yes. uh, what some lay people call a smaller party, but to yes. Inek, all parties are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. There are so many examples in every, almost everywhere you, you're going to get this, mm -hmm. you know. And so when you look at it, when you look at that, mm -hmm. so I think if this, is where, that, the, the, this is where, not to cut you short, but no, this is where the, 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 some of the confusion for Nigerians come in now, mm -hmm. uh, Mohammed, because uh, people are wondering, mm -hmm. are there two results or two processes, one electronic, the other manual? Are there two processes here? Such that, or oh, what is the relationship between electronic process, you know, and uh, of collation and the actual manual one? So such that can explain the credibility gap that people now hold or perceive towards the, the, the elections. Do we have you two see, processes you, you or just see, one I process? Think, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the, the fact is, the, the, the uh, distinction you made is a valid one. That is between process, mm. you know, and uh, as Uzi said, and the end, and the end result. Mm. We had promised consistently, repeatedly, mm. that, you know, results will be transmitted, mm. you know, real time. Mm. We failed to deliver on that. I will be the last person to say we, we performed well on that. Mm. And as my worry is more with the citizens. Politicians, you can always... You know, as far as the politician is concerned, the only good election is the one he has won. Mm. But citizens, as Uzi has pointed out, have started complaining because they were not seeing these results uploaded. Yes. Now, we were worried mm. at, at, uh, at the commission. Mm. What, what was happening, you know, mm. because this thing should have started up. But there were glitches, okay. serious problems. Mm. Our initial fear was probably that there was some, you know, uh, attack. Okay. But it turned out, after a lot of analysis, that at, at the end of the day, the main problem really was that, you know, uh, there were some avoidable errors. Okay. We, you know, we even did a mock. I think, was it on the 4th of February, we did this mock test of the beavers, mm. where, uh, for accreditation, mm. as well as for Transition upload. results, yes. We, we, because we told the the... Uh, the uh, yeah, that they should snap whatever mm -hmm. and then send it to the back end. It. Mm -hmm. And it worked. But the, mis the, the, the mistake was, you know, since Nasara, where we first started the test, testing of beavers, I think 2020, and we've seen that first test, mm -hmm. we've had 105 elections mm -hmm. at various levels, you know, but only up to the state level. Okay. We've had off-season governorship elections, we've had senatorial, we've had members, uh, federal house, we've had uh, state house, but it has never gone beyond the state. So I think the oversight was that we didn't test to see whether it will work when you go beyond mm. the state level. Mm. If you notice, the, the, there were downloads that we didn't have much problems with downloads of senatorial mm. and federal house. It was only with the presidential. Now, if you want to access the polling unit, you go from the presidential, then you open, it goes to the state, then it goes to the local government, then it goes to the world. That step between the president, the national and the state was where the problem came. Interesting. And it wasn't uh, offloaded, so we started wondering what was happening. As I said, initially the thought was maybe there was an attack, and the, uh, the vendors and our own staff you know, they had so much because they had had 
uh, intelligence report that there were a lot of there's going to be a lot so they focused more on the integrity mm -hmm. of the uh, of the system yes rather than you know this problem that we've never tested it at the federal level mm -hmm. thank you so mm -hmm. so the, this was the problem very interesting thank you but 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 it's interesting to hear that it was not even the hackers or the supposed uh, attacks because I will be coming back to that later on. Uh, Galaxy Backbone, the company that hosts uh, most of the internet service in Nigeria as a whole, mentioned yesterday that uh, they received about 200 attacks uh, a few days before the election and over two mi over one million uh, uh, such attacks on election day. Uh, that because that is not INEX source or APC source or government source but the source that actually delivers internet service to Nigerians, that's something we will discuss because that's a serious and credible uh, source. We'll be coming back to that later. But given what uh, Mahal Muhammad Aruna just said now, that there was that um, gap between experience that people had, INEX staff had, and the scale of election that they now uh, had to deal with, if I understand yeah, uh, you right. well. But what was the point of the pilot study that INEX said that they did on beavers, you know, one would expect that that's what a pilot will take care of, you know, to say that, to show that, you know, you simulate a presidential election in one, uh, 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 in three or more states, you know, to see what issues can, can, can come up, you know. So could that also have been the, the failure of the, because the pilot was held as something that was well done and, and, and so on. So I don't understand. If you had a pilot, why have this problem still? Well, I think Paula Pavlina has explained it just now mm -hmm. by saying that it's the federal level. Okay. When you have unitary, when you have smaller units, there was no absolutely no, no problem. You mm. see? But when you extended it to beyond the senatorial district, beyond the governorship election, that's when you had problems. As you said, maybe, maybe it should have been tested, but no mm. off-cycle governorship election was held simultaneously mm. because the date of swearing in and the date of elections were uh, different. Were separate. So, yes. Yeah. So maybe if, say, two or three of them, like, like we have coming up with Emo. Uh, Kogi and um, Bayelsa. 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 Later Bayelsa. this year. Possibly, mm. maybe if that had happened mm. before, mm. perhaps these shortcomings could have seen. The stress mm. tests and all the other tests were done, everything worked uh, perfectly. And I think it's, I think the commission should be commended for that because um, the PVC, when it was introduced in 2015, the first major election was, it was apart from the mock, PVC was thrown straight into the, uh, into the election, into, into the election, a general election. And if you recall, um, it took a while, for example, for the PVC, for the, um, for the, for, for the card reader mm -hmm. to capture the fingerprints of the then sitting president who was contesting. So we didn't have those kind of glitches. I think for, it does different things. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the capture of um, the biometrics authenticating voters, mm -hmm. I think by and large it worked fairly well. One or two within, mini, within um, comfortable margins, mm -hmm. it worked very well in that regard. I, I think INEC will supply the statistics about its efficiency yes. in that regard. Mm -hmm. But it's only in the upload, and not just uh, upload, upload of the House of Reps, it seems to have worked well. Upload of the Senate, it seems mm -hmm. to have worked well. Mm -hmm. But is this cross cross-country mm. upload that seem to have the problems. Unfortunately, the commission did not speak early enough. Yes, I have exactly, yes. well enough. Mm. So people, the, the narrative was seized by these people out of ignorance. People don't know enough. But suspicion, mm. mistrust crept in and there was that void. The mm. void could not continue forever. This narrative now took center stage. Okay. So maybe that, that's an important point. And you mentioned it earlier and I noted it down to uh, take it up uh, uh, that the communication gap you know, that INEC left in the time in which these problems surfaced. Because elections are highly emotional moments. People who <laughs> want their candidates to win by all means, and politicians, they know that. So they, they, they seize upon that. So even beyond the, 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 that communication gap, which we'll come back to, what about the real results? Are there actually any difference between the results announced by INEC and those that would have been transmitted on the uh, 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 IREV, had it been possible? That, that has been a challenge that our chairman threw. Okay. Even during that drama that mm. uh, you know, Dino uh, was creating, mm. that they have copies. They had copies that were that were supposed to have, that were supposed to have been uploaded mm. at that point in time those that had been uploaded 
have they compared and seen that there was a difference mm. between what was physically and, and carried hands? Mm. And they, they had no answer. And my belief was there was no difference. Of course, it was very slow and very few had, uh, mm. and we had gone ahead and still announced even more than, of course, that was being uh, uplo uploaded. Mm. But the ones that were, did you, when you compared, compared them, was there any problem? Mm. They didn't give us an answer. Thank you. So as a former director of water education, if this is because it's interesting, so one wonders where exactly is the problem now? Because if you have the results, it's like, okay, I miss my WIAC result or my JAM result. I went to the portal. I cannot find my result. I went to JAM office. They gave me a hard copy one. Is that a good example of what's going on? Uh, well, uh, say uh, I, 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 I buy ticket, uh, uh, what do, you, do they call it, jam slip, mm. to check my jam result or my work result. I go online, I can't find it. So I go to jam office. Jam office say, okay, Suleiman, here is your hard copy result. Is that, is that a good Well, I'm not sure analogy? if it's an accurate uh, parallel. Okay. Uh, the thing is, since there were those that had been downloaded, mm. all they needed to do was to go and compare what had been downloaded already, mm. few, few as they were, mm. compared to what it should have been. Mm. To tell us, you know, it's like a sample. Mm. If they, now, they can now see a, a disparity between what, you know, uh, they, they copy the, for, for their agent and what we had on the IRF portal, then of course they will be justified to cry foul. Interesting. But apparently they didn't find any because if they did, they would have shouted exactly. even louder than, than, exactly. than they had shouted. So why are Nigerians not familiar with these issues? Why are Nigerians not even aware that the results that people have in their hands are also the same as those ones that I make? Because a party has many elections. You have House of Reps, you have Senatorial, and then you have Presidential. Even if you have a problem with the presidential election, the results that you have in your hands, and INEC was able to upload those of the National Assembly elections on IRA. Even right? the presidential. Even the, some of the presidential. Uh, some of the yes, presidential. you know. So if you don't find any issues on that, why is it that many Nigerians are not aware of that? What, why are Nigerians just following and say the election is credible well, because nothing was you promised? You have to ask most of people who are really yeah. complained. Okay. But I think uh, from what I've read on social media, from what I've uh, seen mm -hmm. monitored on the on radio and things, I think the problem is this. And I keep saying it, we have to draw a distinction the cotton between the, the ordinary voter citizens mm -hmm. and the political parties. Mm -hmm. The political parties were privy to these result sheets, the, especially the collated results. The, the voter was only privy to his own in his own unit. Mm. There, there were 176,606 units where elections were conducted. Mm. So at best, he'll compare with his neighbors or his mm. friends. They will see three, four units. And don't forget that most of the units have not been uploaded. I think about 10, 15 percent as at, mm. as at uh, the next morning. It was a low yeah, percentage. Very, very low percentage. So it was difficult for them to actually make, for the citizens to make that comparison. Mm. But the political parties could because they had copies of the results. Mm. But the citizens, could not. And then there are some challenges as well. I don't know what's responsible. Again, probably part of the technical glitches is that in some areas, they were wrongly pigeonholed. So I remember VI, Victoria Island, for example, mm. some units there. Mm. You go to Victoria Island, what you'll see is Nasarawa mm. results. So that was a bit ah, confusing. There, there was okay. a simple the, explanation for yes, that. What, what happened that's was, what happened. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, in lining up the states, you know, it's alphabetically, yes. A to, to Z, mm. Abia to Zamfara. Zamfara. Mm. And, now, the and then in the, in the IREV, mm. is, that is A, A, FCT is last. Yes. There was, when we had this, when, when we saw that the problem was arising, there was uh, a platform uh, that, uh, that was, was designed to see mm. how we could be able to contain that problem. Mm. And, it, uh, 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 FCT now came number 15. Mm -hmm. So there was a mix up. Okay. So once you have that mix up, it you know, computer, the, the way it's computer, mm -hmm. it, it, down the line it affected. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, all, all of that was eventually corrected. Mm -hmm. And, that's and the we don't challenge. have the, yes, sir, that's the that's challenge. challenge. I'm hearing of this for the first time. I would uh, have precisely. on my own, but Mm. Uh, broadcast it, send it out, say, look, oh, mm. no, this is just reasonable. See what, it, what happened. It makes, a lot of, it makes a lot of sense. It's yeah. all, but the conspiracy theorists were saying Inek was just posting anything. Anyhow, was because anyhow. I received a lot of that. The yeah. one that we talked about, yeah. so, you know, Nasara reading FCT. Yes. Uh, I mean, reading in Lagos. In Lagos. <laughs> so that's, that, that's where communication comes. Yeah. Yes. How has Inek tried to 
uh, address these issues because if you take opinion poll today mm. and you ask a simple question do you think the election was credible or not yes or no just credible you're not talking about who wins mm -hmm. or who lost mm -hmm. do you just because that's what INEC is interested in mm -hmm. INEC should not be interested in who mm -hmm. wins an election oh, or who loses yes, an election. but the idea that the election is credible or not is important to INEC right yeah. so if you do uh, an opinion poll now there's a good chance that you find more Nigerians who would say no to that question than those who say yes to it if, you know we're in the newsroom we follow uh, the news mm -hmm. all the time we follow uh, social media it's easy to make this conclusion mm -hmm. even among the supporters of some of the candidates who actually came out victorious because that narrative is the dominant narrative right yeah, now that's right you know that 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 there's something wrong with the election and a lot of people cannot even explain what was wrong with it but it doesn't matter <laughs> something is wrong with it and that's enough Perception. so mm. what is what did how did INEC allow itself because before the election the reputation of INEC was not this low among Nigerians. Quite high. You know, it was quite high. Especially after people, our show. Yes. Exactly, within Nigeria, but also outside, uh, outside of Nigeria. Outside. In fact, I recollect uh, the uh, US ambassador was saying just a few weeks to the election that they had confidence in INEC. You know, she said so several mm -hmm. times, uh, uh, times, you know. So what happened? Well, uh, <laughs> as Uzi said, there was I wouldn't say communication failure because as much as possible we tried to explain to people what had happened. Mm -hmm. But the problem really was that <sighs> it, it, it was a tough one. How do you begin to explain what you yourself don't, don't understand? Mm -hmm. Because our fear, our, as I said, our fear initially was that it was a ta an attack. Okay. On, so, the, on the system. Yeah. Okay. And we had our, our, our people, our IC people assuring us that this thing will be okay maybe in the next 20 minutes in the next and then it stretched on and on and on and on mm -hmm. until of course eventually so when you are when you are not too sure what it is mm -hmm. it's not easy for you to begin to say mm -hmm. because this you could be wrong mm -hmm. yes. and the fact of the matter i mean is that we were not absolutely we were not absolutely sure what the problem was. now we are mm -hmm. and that's why we've confidently told people mm -hmm. you know that go to, and we've downloaded virtually all the presidential results now. Mm -hmm. So go and compare what you've, what you've been given as a copy mm -hmm. with what is on our IRF portal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I think, sorry, let me just take, take on mm -hmm. the table. That yes. I think that's a wonderful explanation. Mm -hmm. I wish that had come earlier, but you cannot, it's diagnostic. Mm -hmm. And the, the ICD were doing a diagnostic test. Mm -hmm. it's, it will have an improper when you go to a doctor. The doctor will ask you to go and do a confirmatory test. He's suspecting something, but hardly ever will he tell you that, oh, I think you have cancer. That's normal mm -hmm. with all the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. It's diagnosis, but he, until he's fairly sure, he has ruled out one thing or has confirmed another thing, yes. he's not likely to come up with you. The best will say, look, we are working on it, we are testing mm -hmm. it. So I, when you get with the benefit of hindsight now, which has 2020 vision, you begin to understand that. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. Maybe some people have come to look, we're working on it. If, if you had said just an attack, mm -hmm. and later on you come and say something else, mm -hmm. it would matter, matter, make matters worse. So really, it's mm -hmm. like, let us wait and be sure. Or we're experiencing some challenges. Maybe a bland statement, we're experiencing some challenges. It's been worked where our engineers are looking at it, and we'll prove that to you when we are sure of what it is. But it's better to be sure of what it is than to give a wrong Absolutely. prognosis, a wrong diagnosis. Sort of thing. Uh, that makes sense. Thank you really well, I think the problem was the tension. No. Yes. If you remember, we did issue a statement. Internally with the ah, We did issue a statement. Yes. Okay. You know, uh, this, the commission spokesperson, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's first to Sokoe. He did issue a signed statement that yes. we experienced some glitches. That's why the download is not as fast as we thought it would be. And our people have been working on it. Yes. But because, of course, it's election, mm. the tension, it people thought we were not working on it, mm. you know, fast enough to be able to. And, and mm. honestly, there was no way we could tell you this is exactly what it was when we didn't know time. exactly what at that time. Thank you. So you, you, you said something earlier, uh, Barista, that the that that uh, um, the commission has given an excellent uh, uh, explanation that okay the period of diagnosis they were not sure what it was and then now they are sure that that that, that and you accept you find that uh, explanation acceptable you it's know, reasonable it's but terrible. you are just one Nigerian Correct. you know and one voter so, out of and <laughs> trust is already being or out of yes broken. out of you know so how 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 where does that still that gap 
of trust between INEC as an organization and uh, uh, Nigerians as voters or as po political parties members or even as politicians uh, still remain, you know. And the authenticity of the election, the credibility of the election cannot be determined only by the authenticity of the results. It has to be determined also by how many Nigerians believe that the results are authentic, as we saw in the United States in 2020. All the legal tests that the Trump camp brought against the election, all of them, over 200 of them, all of them failed. failed. And, yet, and yet, millions and millions of Americans continued to believe that there was something wrong with the election to the extent that people stormed the Capitol. So, uh, cynicism about an election is serious. Yes. That's even for a democracy that is, you know, just you uh, know, what, 200 <laughs> over 200 years. Uh, what more for our own, where politicians are actually willing? You know, at least in, 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 in the U.S., you can find some Republicans who say, no, I don't want, you lost the election, I don't want to be part of this. Yes. Here, almost everyone is want to be in the camp of saying, no, no, no. So yes. what tax do you think lie ahead of INEC now, INEC now in getting Nigerians to understand what really happened and why and how in relation to the, to, to the election? You know? What task? A very difficult task. Very That's what tough one. <laughs> Extremely yes. difficult. Very because tough. most people's minds have been made up. Mm. First of all, going back, you know that there's a mistrust of state institutions, government institutions generally speaking. Mm. There's been that mistrust. Oh, we can't trust them. Historic. Mm. Anything in government. Of, you know, it's historic. <laughs> it's been there, you know, yes. in this time, that time. We've, we've, we've always had questionable or flawed elections. Mm. Oh, oh, for a while, up to 2022, up to earlier on this year, a lot of people, fair people, fair-minded people, who are, who are not being too emotive, said, look, INEC is the most improved, and there's empirical mm, yes. evidence. Well, I've had that most said. improved mm. public institution. There's mm. public confidence, public trust. Yes. But... Now, this hacking back to the days of, oh, do you trust INEC? They will write results, yeah. they will do this, they will do that. So it's still in their consciousness, even though they trust you, it's still in the consciousness that things can go wrong. People were used to, oh, they write results. How are we sure they're not cooking up these results to write these things? And then, unfortunately, mm. social media is more deep-rooted and widespread than ever before. You see all sorts of things, all things posted as new, mm. but most of us are not discerning. Mm -hmm. Most of us are emotive. With this explanation, any reasonable person will sit back and listen and then make a value judgment based on the new facts that have come to light. Yes. But most people, their mind is already made up. Mm. So it's how to persuade fair-minded people now. And uh, the opportunists in the political parties mm. might want to, well, not might, I certainly want they to. They are very And you know, in Nigeria, perception in is more important than even yeah. facts and reality. Yeah, perception is, mm. is, is all pervasive. People just, it's perception. Perception is the most important thing. And people will believe because of the corruption in the general society, oh, inner people are so corrupt, they've taken money, they've done the bidding of X party or Y party. They are not, most of us are not too analytical, I'm afraid. Because as we said, if you look at the outputs, the outcomes, and you're analytical and you think, clearly, well, let us sit down for five minutes and reflect on this you'll probably find out that this wasn't so bad. If not for that, and for the late uh, logistics challenges, mm, no, no, in many course. ways, I think my honor mm. is right, and I share that view, in many ways and in many places, mm, the election was this is one of the best elections mm. ever conducted in this country. Exactly. And maybe history mm. will be kind of in that yeah. regard. Frankly, But yes. you know, credibility, you look at late arrival, you mm. now start talking of negative, mm -hmm. you now talk of mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. Like violence, how many places did it occur? At 106,606 polling units. I admit that it should not occur anywhere, but to not utopian. They, people would still try. There's some who would do things the old ways. Mm -hmm. But was it 10 percent? Was it 20 percent? Was it 50 percent? Well, maybe it's a good thing. There's no uh, uh, case in the tribunal yet. Mm -hmm. These are preliminaries. Maybe mm -hmm. there'll be a case. Now that's one good thing about the judiciary. Now come and demonstrate this in court. Mm -hmm. But if you run down institutions like INEC, you run down the judiciary, say, oh, they always do the bidding of this party or that party, then you will not have confidence. You will not even go mm -hmm. with an open mind that their justice can be can be gotten from the courts. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that one of the people is Peter Obi, mm -hmm. and he is a, a child of destiny uh, you know, in terms of judicial interventions in his political life. Interesting. He was the first governor to be to be to be declared governor by the judiciary, mm -hmm. doing coalitions mm -hmm. in INEC then. Mm -hmm. No, your results that you gave to this gentleman, mm -hmm. the results show that he won the election. He was returned. 
Interesting. He was the first person who had been impeached. Barack Obama had been impeached and he challenged it in court, but he didn't succeed. The, so his impeachment stood. Mm -hmm. He was impeached. The Supreme Court, the court said no. This impeachment was wrong. So he came back. That's the second uh, history-making uh, adventure of his with the judiciary. Interesting. And the third was when in 2006, in a game notice of election for all states, including Anambra. But he said no. I will challenge this. I have a tenure. The Constitution gives mm -hmm. me a tenure of four years from the day I swear to the oath. I remember office. the case. Not from the day I took, uh, I won the election, but yeah, from the day, from the day I, I took I, office. I, I, I took mm -hmm. office. Yes. And again, for the third time, third consecutive time, mm -hmm. uh, hat trick, as the, those of you, mm -hmm. you <laughs> a hat trick <laughs> of successes with the judiciary. Interesting. He is a, a product of that. It's, this, mm -hmm. are, this is history. Mm -hmm. So maybe once some people say, oh, a pretension has never been returned. If the the, the glitches are such that the, the, the Supreme Court or the Court of Appeal mm. decide that, well, they were fundamental enough, mm. history may be made again. Yeah. I don't know, but it depends on what's proven in court. Mm. Was there violence in, let's say, half of the thing? If there was half of it, then there was no substantial mm. compliance. Yeah, but I, I if the violence, I suppose, was only in 10% mm. or 5%, then maybe they will say, well, there's substantial compliance. This Thank you very much. Uh, since that case is in court, we can only wait. We cannot we we can only wait. Yeah. until uh, that, that comes to uh, something. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for staying with us. This has been a very uh, engaging and we hope to you uh, interesting uh, program. So far, I have with me two guests who have deep knowledge of the insider knowledge of what's going on in INEC and they're sharing their views regarding the, not just uh, the problems with the Beavers machines, but also the cancellation of results. When we talk, we'll return after a short break, we'll be looking at that second part of this discussion, which is what happens, uh, uh, how it affects uh, the postponement of the governorship election and where that takes us and you, the Nigerian voter. Stay with us when we return. Welcome back. This is Nigeria Decides 2023, and we are talking about issues around INEC in the last two weeks, not just uh, the Beavers issues or electronic transmission of results or that going to court or what the courts say, but also the postponement of the governorship and state houses of assembly elections from this Saturday, March 11th, to next Saturday, the Saturday after, which is March uh, 18th, 2023. I have with me uh, Mailem Mohammed Haruna, who is a veteran journalist 
uh, veteran columnist and now and a commissioner in charge of several states, including the FCT. And also with me is Barrister uh, Uzi uh, Osazi, who was also once uh, director of uh, voter education and publicity at INEC. Yeah, welcome once again, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, the, the issue yesterday yeah. were, were, were two things. Mm -hmm. First, the, the court ruling that INEC uh, can go ahead and reconfigure uh, the beavers machines. That's right. And then second, after that, the INEC released a statement that it will be postponing the elections for the governorship, uh, the governorship elections, mm. you know, which were earlier scheduled for this Saturday. The two issues are somehow connected, but not all Nigerians get the connection because most people are not even aware there is a case in court except those by the presidential candidates you know they just come to heard about reconfiguration reconfiguration so exactly what does that mean to uh, nigerians and well how uh, does it affect the thing is for each set of elections you have to configure conf configure the beavers mm -hmm. and we have configured it for the national elections that is the president and the national uh, assembly mm -hmm. now we're set to because of course there was two weeks in interval mm -hmm. so we're set to start to configure it now for the state elections, that is for the governors and the state houses of assembly, when we were served uh, an, uh, uh, an order, mm. you know, uh, the, that the courts, the tribunal had ruled that, uh, I think Peter, Peter had, uh, had uh, approached them. It's actually both of the countries. To say we should give them physical uh, access mm. to the beavers mm. and so that they would look at it because they didn't trust us. Mm. Now, we were served that notice on Friday. By then, we had already, all the preliminaries, our staff were on standby to start going out. Our plan was that by Monday, that is uh, three, uh, by last Monday, mm -hmm. we would have finished the configuration. Mm -hmm. As soon as we got that uh, uh, ruling, mm -hmm. as uh, you know, because you, you know, it's, it's, it's one of our hallmarks that we will be caught order. We now had to tell our staff to stand down. And then quickly, we approached the, the tribunal to say, look, this is the pre the, our predicament now. Mm -hmm. If we don't reconfigure these beavers, we cannot hold the election mm -hmm. on the 11th. Mm -hmm. So, so the cause, the ruling now before, came on, mm -hmm. on Wednesday, yesterday, yes. to say, go ahead and re reconfigure. Mm -hmm. Now, we now uh, held an emergency commission mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. you know, at 6 yesterday, after the court ruling. Mm -hmm. and you know, examined all the issues. I said, mm. could we still go ahead? Mm. So, of course, we called our ICT chaps and told them, what's the minimum number of days you needed to be able to reconfigure the mm. beaver? They said three. Now, since we had stood down our staff, obviously yesterday was out of the question. Mm. But even if we started today, you know, we will, we will still be rec uh, reconfiguring by, by Saturday, which is the day of the election. Mm. And, and uh, you know, there is a house saying that the Mugun Raogo Makintashi, yes, yeah. it's better not to dance at all than to do a very bad dance. Yes. So we just decided that it's better mm. since we, uh, we, there was no way we could reconfigure for, us for uh, uh, this Saturday mm. to move it by a week. Mm. Now, it could have, could have even been shorter, mm. but then we hardly ever held any election. I don't remember. Do you, have we ever held any on a weekday? Not in Charlotte. It's, yeah. So we decided the next weekend mm. is the best. So we all, the commission agreed on that. Mm. And that was after we took the decision that we issued the statement to say. Let, let me stay with my, 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 the commissioner for, for a while mm -hmm. on, 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 on this. Now, the, 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 there are two questions now. Mm. One, supposing, because you said that you obey court orders, you Absolutely. like to obey the law. Mm. So supposing the appeal court had said that, you know, supposing it had decided the other way. You know, that's counterfactual now, but it's important to know yeah. what consequences If it had decided have. the other way, they, they wouldn't have been able to hold the election definitely on this. But we'll, we'll probably try to find the time that will be within the law. Mm. Because the law says, I think... Uh, to give him a minimum of days the, the, before Precisely, swearing before the swearing in, yeah. I think 30 days or so. Yes. So we'd have had to find, but it would be very, very tight. Mm. So tight that you can't guarantee that there will not be a constitutional crisis. Mm. So fortunately, uh, the uh, court, I mean, the tribunal saw with us 
and allowed us to reconfigure. Mm. And we are already set to do that. Mm. So is there any uh, uh, chance now that the 18th date may not still hold? No, absolutely no chance. There is, the 18th is fixed. Mm. So, it has fixed at the Rock of Gibraltar. Said, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some people who say that uh, 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 elections have frequently been postponed in Nigeria. That it's a more of a feature than the fixed one. Oh well, but that, we, okay. the, the president, the national election held. Okay. As at the date resigned, but for this, you know, uh, development, we we'll definitely have gone ahead and held it on March 11th. Interesting. Thank you. So, b b b Barista, this is where I bring you. Some people would say with, with technology, the situation that the commissioner just described, the INA commissioner described, can actually be foreseen. And that it is possible to configure two elections in the same Beavers technology even before the election. That you don't need, because that's why I brought up that counterfactual mm. scenario where mm. the court says, no, you cannot do this, uh, and, and, and so on. That means you won't have governorship election after having, uh, unless you have finished deciding the, the court case following the, and that's straight constitutional crisis, as you rightly pointed out. So some people thought that with technology, some of these things can easily be foreseen uh, beforehand and taken care of beforehand. So how, how, how do you respond to that? Well, it's difficult for me because I'm not a technical person. Okay. But um, just to say that the courts actually look at all those things because there is a balance of convenience that the courts must weigh mm. before they make an order or very such an order. I think the court looked at all these things in making that order. Don't forget, this is a variation of its original order. The court made an order, mm -hmm. haven't just had one side. Mm -hmm. yes. So by the time Inek came and they weighed the thing and they made reference in the ruling that, look, Inek has said, outline these difficulties. Mm -hmm. None of the respondents has countered what in effect they have yeah. it. So mm -hmm. based on this evidence before us, we think we will do it this way rather than that way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a technical person, so I don't know whether it's correct or it's possible or the, 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 the advantages or disadvantages of configuring so many elections in one device as, at that time. But you still would have had a problem because they wanted physical they wanted these devices physically, physical. physical. And, you cannot, yes. and the, the court did not say, uh, when you are doing the election, allow them to take it on Friday and bring it back on Tuesday. No, the court did not say so. Mm -hmm. So that challenge, was, you still have had to face with that particular change. Whether you are coming up the, uh, the elections up to 2050 in that or not, you will still need to give these people access because that's what the court had ordered. Give them access, give them the device. Don't tamper with it. Taking it from point A to point B might be regarded as tampering with, 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 with the thing. Mm. But there was a genuine fear that, look, we don't want this thing tampered with and then uh, evidence mm -hmm. is, is uh, wasted, evidence is destroyed. Mm. I think that's what it, it's all part of the balance that you must weigh mm. in reaching that decision. Mm. Thank you. That's the legal interpretation. Yes. The, the common sense interpretation out there you know that nigerians see and think of you know yes. the very fact that INEC is protesting reconfiguration of beavers for many nigerians the very fact that something reconfiguration is mentioned for many nigerians that means tempering with the results that are already in the in the stored in the system you know maybe there are even results in the beavers or not nobody is even aware because irf is still different from beavers so how maybe as an uh, as um, INEC, uh, commissioner what is there that nigerians need to understand that they now don't you know because well, that crisis of uh, credibility <laughs> even with respect to uh, that is still there yes. for me it's uh, fairly simple and straightforward the fact is that anything human they, they, they are they are about to be glitches it's only god that is perfect of course there are still some some glitches that are available but We've, we did, within what is humanly possible, we did everything, tests, penetration tests, the capacity, everything. And we didn't, somehow, somehow it escaped us that this glitch could still be there. Mm. The, the point I'm making is that, you know, motives are very important. Yes. And for us, our motive was not malicious. Interesting. But of course, out there, and this is the point where I agree with Uzi, mm. I'm more concerned with the citizen than political parties because for the politician the only good election is the one he has won mm. so anything we do they will still they formed their opinion but the ordinary person will want to convince him that look this thing it was not malicious intent and we did everything possible 
and people could see it in any case and that's why i've tried to point out the result because if we had intent if we had manipulated things the outcome would not have been exactly what we are seeing now mm -hmm. So uh, this is my point. Thank you. But some of the politicians are still are star politicians. The millions of voters, you know, go with them, ag uh, agree with whatever they say, sometimes even uncritically, because it's, it comes with being a partisan to somebody, mm. you know. It's part of partisanship, you know. So sometimes when politicians uh, uh, make self-serving criticism of the process, even citizens tend to follow and agree you know, because they trust in the politician more than the umpire, more than the electoral body, or in fact, more than anyone else. Well, in that case, you, so, you have a point. In that mm. case, I must point out here then that mm. the governors that I've pointed out, none of them has come to say he has not lost. At least as far as I know, as of now. Mm. Up till this moment. Up till this moment, none of them have come to contest the election with the results as, as, as were announced. Mm. So I think, I think that in itself speaks volumes. Mm. But I don't know, I mean, maybe they may change their mind and want to go and come, they go to the court, but I'm not aware that any of them mm. has even six, petitioned six, us. Six states initially joined the suit by the presidential candidates, and then they... No, I'm talking about the, the National vote. Assembly, all okay. those mm. sitting governors that have lost, okay. or even senators, mm. like uh, Kabiru guy that I pointed out, mm. you know. None of them, as far as I, I, I has petitioned us to say, he doesn't believe uh, the election was, was free and fair. Mm -hmm. One or two years. So, I, I, for me, that in itself also speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, uh, um, uh, Barista, how does uh, that translate to the issue of the postponement? Postponement of, of the, that word is a bit hard. <laughs> Postponement of the results. We schedule. <laughs> well, we okay, the, 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 the schedule. That, 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 that's the official, yeah, the official That's yeah, even yeah, easier okay. for me to, uh, <laughs> to we, call we that, to yes. That, yes. So uh, how does that lead to the rescheduling of the, the election? Mm -hmm. Because that also, for most people, that's an independent, for INEC, that's an independent and separate event who that was uh, arrived at because of certain circumstances that led to it, separately from the presidential uh, uh, election. Mm -hmm. But for many citizens, they see that as continuation of the issues that started in the, uh, uh, from election day, you know, the credibility issue. So uh, what, what, what's going on? Is it procedural or is it something is cooking that people are not uh, uh, aware of? Again, I am... Um the truth, being so familiar with the process, I know that this is a regular thing. This is the usual. There's nothing at all unusual about it. Mm. INEC configures um, the, the whatever smart card reader reviewers mm. for particular elections. I don't know why. It's only the technical people who say why they do it for mm. one. But the importance, and people don't understand configuration. I'm a layman, but there's a, because of my experience, I want to know mm. a little bit of it. For example, my understanding of configuration, it will configure it in such a way that it does not start recording till maybe uh, it used to be 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 a.m. But this is like 8.30. 8 8 so mm. five minutes before that time, you try and start it or try and... It will not work. It, it will not work for good reason. Mm. So people don't go behind overnight, the previous night, and figure uh, don't sell things and imputed certain information that will be prejudicial to the outcome of the election. Interesting. After a particular time, it doesn't shut at 2.30, because we've learned our lesson, because there might be many people on the queue at 2.30, mm -hmm. but I don't know what time these days. It's my my up to at 7 or 8 p.m., mm -hmm. thinking that, so that at, no matter what, even if it starts at 2.30, all those who are on the queue at 2.30 will still have voted even if it's up to about 7. Mm -hmm. Almost automatically, it will shut down not take any new person, new accreditation, new votes, nothing like that. Mm. So this is just, so you have to now have to reprogram it. If it's not working well, you have to reprogram it. So this is all an essential part of the configuration, speaking as a layman, for example. So the other indices and, and, and stuff like that. Mm. If you explain this to people, if people knew this, ah, you know, some would yeah. nod their heads. Yeah. Okay, mm. I, make, I don't trust anybody. But I think most reasonable people who are not blinded by emotion or mm. partisanship yes. will see this and agree with it. But the, the, the losing position will always look for any excuse, yeah. clutch at straws, and uh, do anything to deride the process and the system. Tomorrow, if he's, as, as Mara Marana said, if it benefits him, oh, well, you know, that's a good election in spite of everything I want, kind of a thing. So, but it's important to break this down to people that not everything is malicious, not everything is uh, subterfuge, not everything is born out of uh, malice, money, gratification, mm. corruption, or, 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 or things like that. Mm. And 
people sometimes think that um, in a CAS meetings and then the chairman right mm -hmm. to the electoral <laughs> officer, right to the polling officer, will sit down and say, let us uh, do this, let us do that, let us uh, subvert the process or let us return uh, party X or candidate Y or things like that. It's well nigh impossible, so difficult to do that with the things that have been put in place, the checks and the balances put in place, it's extremely uh, difficult. But part of the, again, part of the grouse, I think, is that when there was protests, INEC promised to address it but did not quite inform, there's no flow of information back to say, well, looked at this thing, there's no merit or there's merit in it or we don't do this, we don't do that. In uh, the, uh, the Goa, in Kano, for example, mm. they use Section 65. INEC used and said, look, the return officer has said that he did not make this declaration under uh, voluntarily. So, Inek, rightly in my view, went ahead and said, "We're not going to, we're not going to accept this result." And I think if a date has been fixed for supplementary yeah. or something like that. The, and, and, and true enough, he was not one of those who were issued with certificates of return because we uh, uh, decided we were not going to give him a certificate. In Imo State in 2019, yeah, two of the three senators, the same thing happened, and that is why Inek proposed to the National Assembly, and good thing National Assembly accepted this, to say, look, if you did not win an election, if it was given contrary to guidelines as it was in one of the central uh, seats in the NEC, or in the IMO, or if you, you held the uh, return officer hostage and does not the voluntary education, that would be it. Or if there's, a, if there's anything contrary to the rules and regulations and guidelines, then the commission will review it and make a, uh, a finding on it before. If you're not satisfied, anybody who's not satisfied can actually go to court. Or tribunal mm. and stuff like that. These things are inbuilt mechanisms mm. to to enhance transparency and to, to as part of the checks and balances. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Barista. Yes. As this discussion continues, we want our viewers to remember that they are also part of the discussion, not only in their living rooms and in uh, at home or whatever it is they might be, but also right here in the studio. They can just pick up their phone calls. I mean, their phone number, uh, their phones and dial our numbers on their screen and get in touch with us by telling us their names and where they're coming from and then of course uh, making their contribution or uh, asking a question but please as usual speak in a decent language we're all nigerians and we all right, have rights to be respected thank you so uh, uh, malam as, as, as we continue with mm -hmm. this <clears throat> now the election has been uh, postponed, and you have given us that uh, Nigerians uh, assurance, uh, assurance, and that's by implication. INEC has given Nigerians assurance uh, that the election is going to hold on the 18th. 18th. Uh, now, the question people were asking before was some of the issues that came up in the election, uh, the in the first leg of the 2023 elections, mm -hmm. which uh, held in February. I mean, on February 25th, right? Such as delays in the commencement of the election, delays in the arrival of uh, sensitive, non-sensitive materials to polling units, you know, and, 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 and so on. The question people were asking before the uh, rescheduling of the result was, the election was, how do you avoid that in the governorship election, you know, and, 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 and so on. So how do you avoid uh, uh, those issues? Well, uh, in a sense, the silver lining in this, this case of reconfiguration, I would say, is the time is a little more time yet, but it has, in a sense, bought for us. But even before now, I can assure you, all the sensitive materials had already gone, you know, uh, out. In fact, the problem we've, we've had now, mm. we have now, is that we have to return all those sensitive materials, mm. in other words, the ballot papers, the results sheets, mm. back to the central bank. In fact, they had, they had the states, for, for example, uh, the states I supervise, Nasarawa, Plateau, Kaduna, mm. all the materials had gone out. They had gone to the local governments, mm. ready to go to the rack centers, that is the, 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 where, where they stay overnight so that they can quickly move to the polling units on the election day mm. and open in time. They had gone to the uh, local governments, mm. so we now had to call them you know, and in fact, we had some little problem getting CBN to accept them back, but oh. that was has also been sorted out now, because uh, you know, when when they came back, some of the controllers said there are no instructions to take the the, the materials back, but that has been sorted out. So the, the sensitive materials have gone out, even the non-sensitive materials have gone gone, and we've had meetings with the, the resident electoral commissioners and emphasized to them the need for polls to open exactly at 8.30. Mm. 
Because once that does, doesn't happen, you know, there's this domino effect. It begins to affect things on and on and yes. on. So we've emphasized that whatever it takes for polls to open at exactly 8.30, they should. And this is at the state level. It's not like the presidential election. So uh, it's like each little empire, each little state empire of its own. So I'm confident that what had happened in the presidential elections, mm -hmm. that is the two major things. Mm -hmm. One, not opening uh, in time yes. for all the, and secondly, mm -hmm. the upload on IREV will not occur this time. In the, in the governorship uh, elections? In the governorship and the, house, the state houses of Thank assembly. So, but there are other issues that happened in the presidential election. For example, like, in, some, in some polling units, the materials for elections in polling unit A were taken to polling unit D. And those of D were taken to polling unit F, you know, therefore complicating uh, the, the process before people realized, okay, this is where we are supposed to be, you know, and, and, and so on. That's, that's one. There's also another one which affects the contestants now. In some cases, the, 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 the ballot papers will have candidate's logo, but no name. So you have the logo of uh, APC, you have the broom, but without the letters APC. In some other cases, you will have the name PRP, but without the logo key, uh, 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 without the logo of the party, which is a key, you know, PRP. And this happened particularly in the down ballot elections for House of Representatives and senatorial elections during the presidential election. Now we're having uh, uh, states where a smaller number of voters will vote in, uh, for candidates in each case. How are these to be addressed? How will they be addressed? Well, well I, I refer you to what we said earlier. Mm -hmm. the, the, the issue, you know, um, what the point you made about... Uh, the percentage of... Uh, the percentage. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how many? I don't have the figures. But how many, in how many polling units this, this kind of problems happen? I think we should put things in context. Okay. You know, there, there will always be glitches. You are looking at, you are looking at operation that involves how many? Uh, 8,800 and uh, nine, nine uh, words. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you are looking at uh, millions and millions of voters mm -hmm. in a country that is so huge. So glitches are bound to happen. The important thing is, if, is it widespread? Is it enough to affect the election yeah, outcome? So, so and for me, for me speaking, of course, maybe because I'm a national commission, I don't think they were enough, you know. And certainly, the scale will be much. In fact, as much as possible, we've done everything to make sure that they don't even reoccur on even the smallest scale. Thank you. So, but, but, um. Barista, as someone who's been voter education, so you're familiar with these uh, uh, issues, even if you are no longer uh, uh, at INEC, and you're here certainly as in your own right as a citizen, right? Yes. So, so. Uh, but the, if you look at, there tends to be more uh, skirmishes, you know, violent outbreaks uh, during elections at the local elections than federal uh, elections, you know when it is the member has of rights for my constituency, the next door neighbor, or when it's the state governor, these ones, uh, uh, you know, tend to be a bit more intense, both among the contestants and also among the voters. And unfortunately, sometimes tends to lead to uh, problems uh, uh, here and there. W what can Nigerians expect uh, from these processes? Well, I honestly don't know whether, yes, and, uh, passions are sometimes more inflamed when it comes to local issues, local contestations. But also, ironically, I think um, the presidential election tends to attract more attention. And this time around, there was a lot of passion. Don't forget that uh, it's for the first time the time yes. government, uh, since the First Republic, at least, so like a three-horse race, yes. and it was fairly tight. One of the reasons people don't, uh, and, and, and as a yardstick for how maybe how good this election was, was that two thirds, almost two thirds of the people, did not vote for the person who won the election. Yes. 
So naturally, the celebrations will be muted. Mm. You know, two thirds. That's a high percentage. Mm -hmm. Almost two thirds. Mm -hmm. the, the two opposition parties, the all three leading combined opposition parties, parties that, they, yeah. they put all, together, they won in twenty-five states. That's a, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's an awful lot. So yes. these things are there, and mm. it just shows how competitive mm. um, um, the election was. It, it, it was. Um, ethnic tensions were in some areas, maybe religious. I don't know, but in in localities, other issues. Uh, play out maybe historical cultural between settlers and mm -hmm. settlers and native don't come and dictate here. All those issues also uh, come to play. But let me just add something to what uh, Madam Harun has said. But mm -hmm. the national community has said, well, they are doing everything. But I'm surprised the examples you gave. I'm quite shocked at that mm -hmm. because the, one of the another innovation in electoral act is that mm -hmm. now before the election, parties are invited. I'm sure it was done. This they were. Parties they are were. invited. I say, they come were. and look at the sample ballot. They These were. are the logos. Mm -hmm. Any objections you didn't raise it because if you don't if you don't raise it in writing, in writing. Then, then in you lost writing. so I'm shocked to hear that and I didn't hear of it before now. Mm. And it's something worth looking at. I don't know whether it actually happened. Mm. But you are stopped from, mm. from you are stopped from raising the issue because you're given an opportunity. And many of the parties don't have so some parties don't have the acronyms in their logo. Okay. And all these logos are registered with the commission. Mm. They are part of their constitution. If you have to amend the logo, you have to amend your constitution. Yeah. That's why you're saying that the problem might be from the uh, candidates or their no, parties. No, it's the parties. Yeah, it's part of the, the parties. And you are given an opportunity. It's one of the innovations of the of the, of the new yeah. electoral act of 2020. It was never there before. So look at the samples we are going to use. It will be different. And I've not heard anybody complain that it was different from the samples we approved of. You sign off on it. If you have any objections, you should, I think this is within seven days or 14 days, write to the government and say, look, this one, though, my, my, like a key, for example, if there are two keys, you say you put only one key, or there's no key in this, thing, and, and people recognize me because of my key, because of my umbrella, because of my broom, because of Mama, Papa, Pekin. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if there's Mama, Papa, there's no Pekin, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a logo. Mm -hmm. So you have the opportunity of raising an objection as at that time, and when you do, even if INE cannot uh, uh, reprint that sample ballot, then you conduct an election in that place until it gets it right. So I'm, I'm and none sure of them, it. none of them complained. Interesting. Mm. Thank you. We we have a caller from Ibadan. Stanley is calling from Ibadan. Stanley, uh, you're welcome to. You're welcome. Go ahead. Mm. Hello. Hello, Stanley. We can hear you. Just go ahead. Uh, you can ask your question or you can make a contribution. Either way, you are welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Uh, okay. Go ahead. All right. I want this uh, process we're talking about because uh, the barrister there said if the process is not clear to the contestant that they should go to court. Now, this reconfiguration they want to do, we can only feel that call in the general election. Did you just get my yeah. question now? We, we cannot get you clearly, uh, Emmanuel. Can you, can you uh, maybe get away from your TV a little? If you get away from your TV a little, then you speak uh, more clearly. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I said this visa they want to reconfigure. Yes. Will it not be breach the process? that happened during the election. Thank you very much, uh, mm -hmm. Emmanuel, for joining us from Ibadan. I think his point is clear now, mm -hmm. that these beavers mm -hmm. that they want to reconfigure, mm -hmm. will it still not breach what happened in the presidential election? Meaning that maybe the data for the presidential election would be tempered with by INEC or, or something like that? Well, the, the courts have looked at it. You know, and I are convinced, obviously, that it will not, you know, tamper with the data that is on the... Actually, the way it works mm -hmm. is that when you, as we reconfigure, mm -hmm. it pushes, automatically pushes the data that is in the beavers, mm -hmm. that is the design, onto the back end. So there is absolutely no way that what is already on the beavers can be tampered with. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there you have it, uh, uh, Emmanuel. But 
I was just going to ask before he did, or do you want to, to no, respond I think that's, to? No, that's sufficient answer. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, that what expectations can Nigeria have that INX performance in the governorship elections will somehow address the concerns about transparency and credibility, like it or not, that are already on ground right now? You know, is INX seeing this as an opportunity to do better so that uh, okay maybe before you answer we have mm -hmm. ezekiel from nasara thank you uh for calling us and for joining us uh, uh ezekiel just go ahead and uh, tell us uh give you your contribution or you can ask your question yes i'm ezekiel okay. from nasara go ahead uh, ezekiel, my, question, my question is just that uh how long should a resident commissioner serve in a particular state? Mm. Because if you look at our state, since 2019 or 20, before 2019, we have been there. Others okay. have been transferred or are all remain there. Mm. So does that mean that mm. once they are permanently or there is room for transfer? Mm. And secondly, okay. I want to also know why is it that during distribution of materials, some areas will have materials and others will not have at the time they're supposed to have. Because we all have the same rights to be able to be voted, I mean to vote at the, the same time. And because this issue is giving room for people to migrate from one place to the other. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ezekiel. Um, I think, uh, thank you very much. Uh, your point is uh, very clear. Uh, the two questions you have asked are uh, also uh, very clear. Yes, please. Mm. He's very asked uh, uh, the one that why is it that during uh, uh, elections some areas will have voting materials, materials, some areas will not have voting materials. <laughs> are they not all? Are we not all equal voters? Absolutely. Because there is a credibility issue there, I think, mm. which is pointing to. Mm. It will make some people feel that the areas that I in favor, people get to vote. The areas that INEC doesn't favor, people don't get to vote. I think that's what Ezekiel is trying to say, which is very important. Secondly, he asked whether INEC resident electoral commissioners... Uh, uh, um, Policy for how long they stay in... For how long do they, they, they stay, stay in yeah. particular states, or uh, uh, so whether they are permanent there or, or not? Yes. Well, regarding the first uh, question, you know, this issue of balancing the number of voters power polling unit mm. is something that we really worked hard to try and achieve mm. uh, unfortunately we didn't get the kind of uh, as much cooperation from the public as we had wished because when you remember for 25 years mm. the polling units were just 120,000 exactly then we worked hard uh, when uh, professor mahmoud uh, uh, came mm. and increased it by over 50 after almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. Now, in the process of doing that, we engaged with all community leaders, religious and leaders, and tried to get them to get their people, you know, as much as possible to, when they come to register, mm -hmm. you know, to pick polling units which are close, closer to their. And we had issues with that. There are, uh, when, when new voters came, a lot of them, and especially old voters, they preferred to still remain where they were even though we thought we tried to point out to them that there are polling units closer. Mm -hmm. For some reason, sometimes some, uh, we don't understand. So, but some of it is that maybe they are familiar with that and they don't want to uh, change, you know. Mm -hmm. But, so that is there. So that is a problem. And, you know, we've been trying, I, I wouldn't say we got it really completely right. Mm -hmm. These imbalances are there and as much as possible, we've been trying to address them. But, you know, we won't be able to fully address them until after this election. Okay. Because you remember there were even polling units where there were zero uh, voters. voters. And we had to announce to the world so that they don't think something funny is happening. Mm -hmm. That we had 240 vo uh, polling units mm -hmm. where nobody bothered to register. So we are not going to deploy materials there. And people there. Yeah. And, and there, okay. people there. But certainly we don't, del we don't deliberately just stab one area. and mm -hmm. because. The, 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 voters, the voters are there, the uh, uh, register of voters is there, we know how many there are, and as much as possible we will try to match, you know, the number of uh, 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 this thing, 
the vote the ballot papers will take with the number that are existing on the voters register <laughs> but uh, regarding okay. the uh, yeah. INEC commissioners yes, uh, policies change in time once upon a time mm -hmm. used to they used to uh, rotate uh, re resident electoral commissioners across geopolitical zones mm -hmm. but somewhere I think during I don't I don't know whether it, 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 they took the commission took the decision that you will be re uh, rotated only within your zone mm -hmm. It could change, so it's maybe depending on the, the circumstance. Okay. But for now, you serve within your. Mm. Uh, but I think Ezekiel's point well, is whether there is any deliberate, whether there is any deliberate attempt to yeah, keep people there in order to turn the results. One no. Way. Hmm? no. As I said, it's purely administrative. Okay. If there is no reason for us to move uh, resident uh, electoral commissioners, we would. Mm. but if there is reason. For instance, we've had cause, for instance, in this election, this presidential election, to ask a resident electoral commissioner to stand down. This was in Abia, because we had issues with him. Throughout, we couldn't reach him. Eventually, by the time we reached him, you know, it was on a Sunday. So there was no reason why a resident electoral commissioner should remain in communicado okay. in a sensitive way. So, a period like this. Precisely. So, so at Sokoto, we had the... So, so these things, these things are there. It depends on what, what the circumstances are. Mm, thank you. Mm. But opinion-wise, would it not be wise to change them every election? Well, um, I don't know, but it depends on each. You know, there's, it can't be general, there's a general policy, by the way. Mm. Staff, for example, who have served in a particular state for two election cycles, they have to. But move. don't forget that the secretary that have more permanent people. The the the, the maximum record stay on national congress five years, and except it's renewable for another five right. years, and it's highly unlikely that a rec will remain in the state throughout his tenure. Mm -hmm. Not very not very likely. But you don't change for change's sake. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're refreshing things up and things like that. And sometimes mm -hmm. there are certain peculiarities. For example, if you're only to move into a particular state, maybe the administrative secretary is there or his school there, he has no associates in that place and you don't think it will be safe for the image and for his own credibility and um, credibility of the process, you may decide, no, I can't move him. But there are all sorts of considerations. Mm, thank you. Uh, Anthony is calling, has joined us from a number of states. Uh, from Anambra, Anthony, you are welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023 on Trust TV, and we're happy to have you uh, join us. Uh, you can just go ahead and ask yeah. your question or make your contribution. Yeah, good evening, all. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I want to ask. I want to ask question. Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, uh, I, I I understand that uh, opposition parties. Uh, uh, Labour Party pleaded before to examine the material, the election material in the business. Mm -hmm. But uh, I make sure that uh, there is no time for that because the election coming this very Saturday. Now, uh, court has granted I make to reconfigure the divas the, and they postpone the election. Mm -hmm. If they know that they will postpone this election, why can't they allow them to examine that uh, visa? I mean, to examine that electoral material as they did before. Thank you very much, Anthony. Very good question. I'm sure the two uh, uh, guests here are in a good position to respond to your question. Well, yes. Anthony, I don't know if you was here at the beginning. We mm. explained why it wasn't. He has to look at the sequence. Mm. The course ruled, and. After the court ruled, they ruled rather late mm. give, to give us enough time to be able to reconfigure the beavers for the election on, on March 11. That's why we've had to, mm. you know, to shift it by, by, by one week. Yes. So, but, but, but is, 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 is there anything you wanted to, yeah, to add? The court okay. did not say they should not examine the material. At yeah. all. Yeah. If, on the contrary, the court agreed. And INEC had also offered that, look, these materials will be examined. Mm -hmm. No data, nothing will be compromised, nothing will be lost. Mm -hmm. So the court ruled that, yes, the parties, Labour Party and PDP, and any other party that applies to, and, and um, APC, A and one. PDP also. Yes, and APC, APC also applied. And all the three yeah. parties. Yeah. Yeah. Only NMPP did not apply, actually. So far. They can all, we can still <laughs> so far, apply. Yes. And in that way, I, I told you earlier, mm -hmm. they have 21 days to bring a petition. Mm -hmm. We've exhausted less than one week. So maybe someone else will still apply. We don't know. But anybody mm -hmm. who applies will have a right, is entitled mm -hmm. to, not just the beavers, but all materials used for the election, the ballot papers. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. That's in the, the, the order is actually quite all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. We're focusing so much on the beavers, mm -hmm. but it's a very wide, very all-encompassing 
order made uh, almost six, seven days ago mm. Thank to you. allow mm. access to these materials. And in a, so far, it has no uh, Actually, so actually, the uh, court even as tried it. As, as guests come in, I may have okay. to inter uh, interrupt you against my will okay. so that we can take uh, people because they're on the phone. Yes, yeah, Solomon from uh, uh, Joss. Uh, you're welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023, and we're happy to have you on Trust TV. Please go ahead and make your contribution or ask your question. Oh, it's like we've lost Solomon. Solomon, try to get back to us. We're still here. Yes, sir. You were saying. Yes, as I was saying, the court even chided us because we, one of, when we said they should vary the order, you know, we said uh, the kind of, we thought the kind of access they wanted would have even kind of violated the privacy of the court. And the court said, no, we are, we are aware of that. All we know, we, but we know this information is available mm. at the back end. Yes. Now, all we are saying is, uh, you, you, so that's why we've allowed you to reconfigure because you know the f information is available el in, uh, elsewhere so they don't have to really go you know uh, the, physic the kind of thing they wanted because it may violate the rights of voters mm. but the parties did they agree to this process even though it's a court ruling they have no choice uh, but, 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 precisely <laughs> you <answered laughs> they that. To agree. but what <laughs> further steps did yeah. INEC take to reassure them that the material on the, the data on the back end will not in any way be be tempered. No, all they need to do, all they need, need to do is to apply for CTC okay. of the information that is at the back end, mm. and we are bound. Mm. We are to deliver. To, to, to deliver. To hand it, okay, mm. that's all right. And we've already mm. done that anyway. Mm. Uh, take the case of Washington, for instance. Mm. You know. Mm. So I was uh, you, you asked earlier, but you didn't have a chance to respond. That how is the twenty I mean, the governorship election, an opportunity for INEC to address some of the concerns of transparency and credibility. I, I, thought, I, I, I thought I'd answered that because okay. I said we've met with the, uh, uh, the regional electoral commissioners. In fact, we've even gone beyond that. So mm. the national commissioners have even long before now, mm. you know, uh, we are going to do that again. Mm. We find out, we go to the states, we supervise, mm. meet with, again with regional uh, electoral commissioners mm. to see as to the state of readiness and meet, meet even with the EOs. That is, okay. just like Rex are in charge of states, the electoral office as I'm in charge of local government mm. to make sure that every because that's really okay, where have the, to cut you short okay. a bit. we have Elijah from Niger State. Uh, Elijah, um, go ahead. You're welcome to Nigeria Decides uh, 2023 on Trust TV. We're happy to have you here. If you could just walk a little away from your TV set, or if you can reduce the volume of your TV set, then you can ask your question or make your contribution. You're welcome. Elijah, are you still with us? Hello. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Elijah. Uh, what I really want to uh, what I was given the election of the very representative of the Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, right. But uh, a lot of a lot of people do not know what to do because of the people. A lot of people, a lot of people do not know to do because of the change of the people. So what I mean, I am not aware of it because we are not in the Arctic. The the network is unfortunate that we cannot hear you clearly. You know, I'm not. Uh, maybe you can try again, or you can try with a different uh, network, and we hope we'll be able to hear what you are saying. Yes, sir, you were addressing how the the governorship elections yeah. present you with an opportunity. It's yes. an opportunity, and I can assure you it's an opportunity we will not miss. Okay. Because it's the, it's the only opportunity we have to redeem the problems that, that has beset the, the national elections. So w w what about Nigerians? What should they now expect? You know, and how should they balance the two elections or the two legs of the same election? You know, should, for example, and I can only guess at this point, right? Should maybe uh, Anik uh, address some of these issues? Would that in any way 
uh, damping the suspicion that uh, the election uh, uh, is not credible and, 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 and so on among it's a dilemma oh, definitely it will assuage the those who are dissatisfied will assuage their fears a little bit if in goes around and mm. conducts the election um, picture perfect in accordance with the regulations and the law or oh, certainly it will do it to help that but the issue and um, the other side of the coin is that some say oh so you could have done this before mm -hmm. that only goes to prove that mm -hmm. yes there was uh, something on two or something malicious uh, two weeks ago when you said you're not going to do it but which way in you know, it just has to do the right thing has to yeah. do it in accordance with the law and regulations and satisfy itself that it has done what is humanly possible and in accordance with the rules that have been made for it and one it makes by, by itself uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a redemptive battle, it's a battle for redemption. And uh, there's no choice, because we must move ahead, there must still be elections, mm -hmm. there's no choice, you know? So there's a big task ahead to, mm -hmm. to, to get back the confidence of people in the process and in the system and in the commission itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yes, we have uh, Clement from Taraba State. Clement, you can tell us where you are coming yes, from Taraba. in Taraba. And then you go ahead and make your contribution or ask your question. Go ahead, please. Yes, yes. From Taraba State, Sardona Yes, go ahead. Yes, I am. Yes, I am from Taraba State, Sardona Lukugame. Okay, yes. Uh, you are welcome to Nigeria Decides on, yes, uh, on Trust yes, TV. Sir. What I want to say is. Yes. Why is it that we in Nigeria, after. Gathering international observers. After gathering international observers, uh oh, maybe you can turn down the volume of your your TV set, you know, or you go away a little and, from. And you, dis you discover that they are seated and the election was going wrong. Nothing. Okay, 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 I'll do. <laughs> yeah. After a lot of sitting with the international was passed, we should behave in a short Nigeria. You, you see that in Africa, in the whole continent of Africa, where in Africa do you see people do elections in Nigeria? And after elections in Nigeria, we always have problems. What, what, what is the other chairman? Why, why does he get his own claim to come and decide over the vote of Nigeria? He said, it's just for a good nation, Nigeria who is, who is the world and the of Africa. All the time, we have problems of this election. We have in the court. And mm -hmm. you get it. That is, uh, I want to you. And you to talk to the to the last chance that we are in and go. Thank you very much, uh, Clement. I think uh, your point, uh, at least we get one point from, uh, uh, one question from what, what you're trying to say. And I, I go straight to uh, Barista uh, uh, Uzi on that. You know. okay. He's asking that why is Nigeria such a bad example for Africa, if I get him well, that every election we always have a problem, we're always having a, a, a problem. How can we normalize having problems in our elections, you know, I think that's the question mm. that uh, Clement is raising. Well, it looks like it's not by size, not by might. <laughs> um, planning, we just have to plan. Yeah. We really should be a beacon. Mm. We should be, if we are, as we call ourselves, a giant mm. of Africa. Mm. It's not just in size, but in everything, not just in wealth, mm. but in we should be a leading light for other African uh, countries, which will be setting the pace, which will be pace setters. Mm. Uh, so we have to get our logistics right. We have to get our planning right. And I think that planning is basically the thing. So much resources and so much, so many tools are, have been deployed to this planning. But somehow, I don't know. I really don't know. We still have the same issues. But there's a question you ask, and uh, what are the assurance and things like that? For example, about lo uh, overcoming logistics challenges. Yes. I think, first of all, we should know what are the causes? What's the reason for these challenges? Because unless and you know those fundamentals, you cannot go and start preferring solutions as to how you are going to overcome them. Why is it so? People, I was in another studio the other day and people said, okay, why, we, why is INEC depending on NURTW, NATO, and things like that? I said, well, 
give me a, who do we depend on? I said, okay, fine, we can use uh, government vehicles. I said, how would you feel if, for example, in uh, Lagos or in uh, Rivers or in Sokoto State, you see inner officials in state yeah, just vehicles? Just one moment, let me take, uh, let's take a call from Daniel Inyola. Daniel, you're welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023, and Thank we're happy to have you. During the presentation, so that confusion will not come in, in Nigeria. Okay, then Daniel, can Hello? you can you can can you hear us? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Uh, just go ahead and okay, ask okay. your question or make your contribution. Then. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm emphasizing on use the DV, uh, DV machines in this gubernatorial election. Let it be properly and let the monitoring of the evaluation in each polling unit will be properly monitored so that any machine that the contact is yellow it will be recorded thank you very much uh uh, 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 uh emmanuel oh? from uh, yola yeah thank you he, what he said is that mm. in the governorship election mm. and should try and make sure that the beavers machine particularly for the uploading of results works well. is works well and that where there is a failure that should be recorded so that at the end of the election nigerians will know actually how many beavers machines did not work well as against those that worked well in the i, I think that's a very good uh, yes. uh, useful contribution uh, to uh, but we'll come back to that because that's your question well, we do that all the time okay it's it's nothing new that's why we have ratex what you call uh, you know uh, there are technicians at the uh, uh, ward level yeah. that if there is any problem, we quickly call, call the, they are on standby yeah. to rectify. If beavers doesn't work, yeah. or if in the halfway through, it, you know, there are some problems, they quickly come in. Sometimes we replace them. Sometimes they, they work on them and then, you know, so that they can continue uh, in the same point. I'll, I'll take up that question uh, okay. shortly. Because he, but he was saying something about... Um, what Nigerians can expect, you know, based on what uh, one of our callers asked regarding why we keep having these problems again and again and again. Yeah. Okay. But we've just had another guest again. Today we are having a flurry of guests, and I think we love it, and we hope that our viewers at home also love it. Zachary from Kano, you're welcome to Nigeria Decides on Trust TV. Please go ahead okay. and ask your question or make your contribution. Okay, I, I want to contribute. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, you see, my contribution is about the liver machine. Mm. So if it is necessary to use this kind of machine, the uh, let's call it would be scheduled for at least uh, this month. That is fine. Mm. Do you hear me? Hello? Hello, yes, go ahead, please. Mm. Okay, if there's no problem, why not to drop it? That is to keep it aside and bring uh, back to our normal. <laughs> that is to carry out the election mm. using that manual. The manual uh, process, yes. Mm. Because maybe this program may continue mm. at this time in the election. Mm. Thank you. Like to the problem we have before. Mm. Thank you, Zachary. Let me ask you a question. In your opinion, which okay. would you prefer if you were to choose between the manual that we are used to and the Beaver's electronic transmission now that we have? Which would you prefer okay. that INEC should use if you, you had a choice? The one which I prefer is by using this uh, uh, Beaver. Okay. But the problem with Beaver now. We realize there is much problem, mm. which I think even the next election, mm. I don't think they are, we cannot get it correct at the way we like it to be. Mm. So that is why I say if there is possibility, why not to keep it aside? We have to see that we get a. Uh, Thank you very much. 
Mm, thank you, Zachary uh, from Kenya. We're happy that you joined us. And please join us again tomorrow and next when we meet uh, right here. Well, I, think, so, I think it's important to mention to Zachary yeah. that yes. these two things exist side by, by side. side. Okay. They both exist. So we're using both the one he's more used to mm. and the beavers. The only problem we had was with beavers. We had no problem with the manual one. So it's important for him to note that. Mm. I, I think I, I, I will speak, uh, uh, try to reinterpret what he means okay if you have what i think he's saying is that yes. if you are having problems with the viewers because yes. it is the beavers that is the only issue in this election so far if you are having problems with it and that's because like you said INEC promised repeatedly that it was going to use it and it turned and um, it raised its expectations of nigeria because it had worked a lot of people exactly a lot of people even saw it as some magical Vincent. innovation uh -huh. that will turn the election 100 percent you know uh, 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 legit yes. and, and and all that and now you're having problems with it that's creating a crisis of expectations mm -hmm. you know and fulfillment or yes. deficit mm -hmm. of fulfillment so he is saying that if that is the case why don't you just wait yeah. and use the the, the, the yeah. manual that we are used to, and then do it well, and then have a, a good election? It's yes, not. A, it's not an option. First of all, the, the law is quite clear. Mm. You know, you cannot conduct elections anymore without the US. Thank you. So, right. so, so, in any case, if why go back to something that clearly is, is bound to fail? This one has a, uh, the, the, the only problem, there are glitches in this one. Mm -hmm. So you can improve on it. As in anything human, anything that is an hum, a human invention, mm -hmm. you can always improve on it. So the point you should be ask, uh, making is that we should, as much as possible, mm -hmm. improve, make sure that you know, the problems we had don't recur. Mm -hmm. But not that we should just throw it away. To, to, you wanted to add to that. Mm -hmm. No, basically the same thing. I just wanted to clarify that um, today it's beavers. It may not be beavers tomorrow, tomorrow. but any other technological, technological uh, device is the discretion of INEC to use. So maybe if beavers is giving us too much trouble, maybe they will improve the software, maybe there will be a hardware change or whatever. But let's wait and see how it works. It has worked very well in the past. And there's good reason to believe that it will work in the future, but let us just see another one week, 10, 11 days time, let us see how well uh, it actually works. It had glitches and it had been resolved. Almost all the uh, polling units are actually up there now. If there are any issues, Commission will tell us why the other ones are not there a week, uh, so many days after. But definitely, let's wait for the governorship and state houses of assembly election. Mm. Let's see how it works. Give it a second, mm. a second chance. You don't always throw the baby with the bathwater. No. The minute there's a glitch, mm. when you say with ATM cards, technology, ATM mm -hmm. cards, for example, a lot of the time it will not, it will say it has dispensed money to you, but you don't get the money. Mm. But now with technology, with the improvements and improved services, you see that there's been marked improvements. With GSM, there's so many drop calls before. There still are, mm -hmm. but it's there's we still use them. the kind of mm -hmm. things it has done. The advancement that have been made in the last 15 years or thereabouts are so incredible. You didn't say, oh, oh, I can't make this call. You are here. I'm sitting here. I can't get you on the phone. Let's do it. With. No, you don't say so. It's just how to make it better. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. I think we'll be taking our final uh, caller, Abdul Kadri. Where are you calling from, Abdul Kadri? This is Abdukadi Badmati calling from Kogi State. Okay, go ahead, Abdukadi. You are welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023. Yes, please. Go ahead and Thank ask you question. very much. Mm. I think Nigeria has decided. Okay. <laughs> and we've been deciding. Mm. The only problem we're having with the election in Nigeria is the on fire. <laughs> so I think the solution problem is to allow all party men, all parties, to be the umpire of any election that is taking place in this country, so that they will be they will, they will witness whatever is happening there. We don't have trust in, on these INE chairman. We don't have trust in on our professors. Allow each party to be part of the umpire, so that this thing can be corrected once and for all. Mm. Thank is, you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Abdul Kadir. Should I let me ask? Is that sarcasm or? <laughs> Uh, because you are saying that political parties and their representatives should be part of the uh, umpire they and should, should officiate the election. Okay. So is that sarcasm? Is that speaking in parables? Or, or that's exactly what you mean? I'm not speaking in parables. I am trying to say that the only way we can correct this is the right now is to allow each candidate to become an umpire <laughs> as the election continues. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Abdul Kadir from uh, uh, Kogiste. Thank you. So, well, <laughs> it's like asking in uh, a football match for all the footballers to be to be the referees. To yeah. be the referees, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Yeah.
Mm. Uh, there, there are bound to be glitches, frustrations, and so on. Mm. But the thing is to address them. To that, there are solutions to these problems. Mm. So, as much as possible, for us to have the patience to be able to address the problem. I mean, solve those problems. Mm. Interesting. Thank you. So, but, but, uh, sorry, yes. it's not as far-fetched. It's, it's very. Um, I don't know how he has put it. Mm. It's ridiculous, really. It's absolutely mm. ridiculous. <laughs> but, 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 but. In there, there's something there. There are some countries where political parties are represented on the board of the election management body. Okay. If that is what he meant, in a broadly speaking, broad way of manner, in mm. Mexico, for example, mm. commission meetings are open to the public. Mm. You could just walk into the country and listen to everything that is done. Mm. So it's something that, but I don't think anything is fundamentally wrong with our structures because INEC, for example, consults quite a lot. There's no major yeah. policy decision that's done without consultation with the political parties. Mm. But it's a, it's, a, it's a model that some people, how well it has worked is a different thing. Or whether it can be transported lock, stock, and barrel mm. to Nigeria is a different thing. For example, all political parties know where uh, INEC is going to print sensitive materials. Many of those countries don't have what they call sensitive materials. There's nothing sensitive. Uh, not, they don't print their, 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 their ballot papers to currency. <laughs> <level. laughs> no, no, they don't go with security, yes. armed security mm -hmm. as if you're carrying cash. Yes. You, know, you don't do that. But, but it may be something, but I don't think that would be a very popular uh, thing in Nigeria to say, rather than have independent people as you have now, although some people say that uh, some members of the commission, not so much people, but at least the recs are compromised and are former or present card carrying members of political parties anyway, but it's only one party or the major party that is represented amongst those appointments. Well, I think basically the structure, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. Let us see how we can go. You mentioned confidence in the commission, naturally people But, but yeah. that, that, that issue of representation that you mentioned, because INEC consults a lot, like yes. you said, yes. and yet once, when it has one or two problems, mm. the same political parties and the same politicians seize upon it and try to discredit the That's entire correct. process, you yes. know, throw the baby away with the bathwater, like you said uh, uh, earlier. So maybe if having uh, members of political parties represented on the board of INEC, maybe that can uh, uh, help. Maybe but there is an hmm. issue that was also raised yes. regarding the new electoral law requires that beavers should be used uh, uh, in the election, all the elections going forward. Beavers or any, or any other technology as the case may be. So in this election, one of the issues that has come out as our final question on the program uh, uh, so far uh, is that the electoral law requires, some people are saying shall, that it's must, that it must, you know, you must uh, uh, upload the results by some electronic means. And if you have not done that, therefore, the election is null and void. I'm asking you that because you're also a lawyer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Well, yes, there's a certain uh, mandatory language used by the Electoral Act and by the inner guidelines requiring uploading of the uh, Beaver's machine. The Commission has even gone further, made other promises and everything else. But I am not allowed now that the case is likely to go to court mm -hmm. to say, you know, mm -hmm. they are in breach here or they are in compliance or the case will be successful or not. I'm not allowed. It's sub judice, as lawyers will say. We're not allowed to do that. But it's, 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 is this breach fundamental? Is there substantial mm -hmm. compliance with the Act or not? That is the decision left for the tribunal mm -hmm. to decide. Thank you very much, uh, uh, INEC Commissioner uh, Mali Mohamed Haruna. Thank you for being here with us Thank today. You. We hope to have you again. Thank you, Barista uh, Osazi Uzi, for having uh, you with us here as well. Thank you. It's so interesting uh, to, to have you both. Uh, thank you also, our viewers, for staying with us through to the program. This is where we draw the curtain for tonight's edition of Nigeria Decides 2023. We hope that we will be here with you again tomorrow, and you also join us tomorrow when we meet for yet another edition of Nigeria Decides 2023. My name is Suleiman Suleiman. Bye-bye.
TV. Documenting the Nigerian story.